Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is the Squarp Instruments Hermo Modular Brain. So, is it Hermit or Hermo? I'm not quite sure and I don't think it really matters. I'm going to be using both of them if you don't mind. So, Hermo is Squarp Instruments modular brain and there's a reason why they call it that because this is going to be your polyphonic monophonic sequencer you can use this as your MIDI interface both on the DIN side as and on the USB side um, you can use it for your clocks you can use it as an LFO and much much more so in this video I'm not going to be showing you all of its functionality but I'm just again going to show you how I typically use it there are some great other videos out there that I'm going to be linking to in the uh, description below and if you've got any other videos you want to share just drop them in the comments of course uh, I do have to thank Squarp Instruments for making this unit available to me but that will of course in no way shape or form uh, influence my opinion or this video um, that being said, I would say, well, let's have a closer look and uh, here we go. So the Squarp Instruments Hermit Modular Brain, up close and personal. Um, it is the biggest module in my current setup and it earns that place. And I'm going to show you why I think that is. So this is not going to be a full on expose where we're going to be menu diving through all of its features and functionalities. No, this is me just explaining how I work with this and why I truly love this module. Uh, but before we do that, um, let's talk a bit about how this thing is organized because the first thing I saw when I opened up the quick start guide is I was lost. I was quite intimidated by that document and I thought, okay, well, this is going to be a module I'm never going to get the hang of until I actually started playing around with it. So. It is a very intuitive mod, uh, module, uh, but it's the best thing to, 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 to learn it hands on. So let's break down some of the core concepts and the actual architecture here. So the first thing you do is you've, you've got things that are called projects and you could theoretically say that a project could be a song, a full on song consisting of several parts. So those parts of a project, that's just a, uh, create a new project from scratch consists of several sequences so in the case of the hermit one of those projects can consist of, of a total of eight sequences so one two up until eight there you go and those sequences in turn can have eight tracks and those tracks correspond to the eight CV and gate outputs you see right here. And those tracks could be things like uh, monophonic uh, voices, polyphonic voices that consist of multiple outputs, of course. It can do things in unison. And you can also have very uh, dedicated tracks for modulation, aftertouch and velocity. And I'm going to show you all of that. And Every one of these tracks can have a, a total of eight effects added to it and applied to it. So you can have an arpeggiator, but you can also have a ratchet. And, you, and then the order in which you add these effects also well, will affect it as well, because an arpeggiator after a delay will sound differently than the delay after an arpeggiator, for instance. So there are certain things that you need to keep in mind there so you've got a total of eight sequences per project each of those sequences will have eight tracks in total and each one of those tracks can then have eight effects added to it and an actual track is well a canvas that you can record to by using your midi or or usb keyboard um, you can manually program that in. So we're holding the button and you can just add new notes to it. There you go. Like that. 
that's of course quite tedious but you can also just record it and the one thing i truly love is it's got a randomizer function there as well so you can actually just have the hermit generate music that's already sounding quite nice so what i would like to do is just quickly build something from scratch of course you saw that we started from scratch already and I'm just gonna show you what I do and I'm gonna explain what I do and why I do certain things. So we already have our first track ready. So let's start by uh, connecting my first track. So I'm just gonna grab some cables here and I'm just gonna connect this one. So the CV output for track number one, I'm gonna connect that to the full pro octave in on the nano modules owner. I am then gonna take the pulse width modulatable triangle wave and connect that directly to the black jewel VCF by Eric Sins. And I'm grabbing the summed output from there and I'm gonna connect that to the input of the Lich that I'm running as a silky reverb. So there you go. That's the sound that we get. If I then press play, That's already a nice sequence that we've got there. The other thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna grab the gate output from there and I'm gonna use that to, uh, to modulate my cutoff frequency. So we get a bit of a rhythm going there. So the next thing that we can do is we can add an effect to this. So let's uh, add a an additional delay to that delay. Ooh, that sounds a bit chaotic. So let's change that, and replace that with, for instance, a ratchet. That sounds a little better, if you ask me. So this is how you can then play with that. So we can actually add another effect to it if we want. Let's do a, let's add some bit of glide to it. If we then open up the, make, makes it a bit more dynamic, I like that. Okay, let's go to track number two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab tra track number two and we're gonna configure that to be a single voice that we're gonna use as a modulation source. So we now have nothing in the modulation steps yet. Let's do a random one, that's nice. Something a bit more dynamic. Yeah, that, that's, that, sounds, that seems to be nice. So grab that. I'm gonna use that to modulate the pulse width of the Oh, no. oh, you hear that evolution of the sound already. So this is how you can then do that. And I can actually say, well, you know what I want to do is I want to grab the seventh step there and I want to lower that to that. Or I could say that second step, I want to bring that down as well. So this is how you play around with the with the hermit. So the next thing we can do is we can go to track number three, track number three, and we can then configure that and say, well, I want to do a multi-voice. I can go in and say, I want to do a, a three voice. I can say, I want everything to be running in, in unison. I want two voices in unison and the other for velocity. I could want a mono one plus after touch plus velocity or I want to have a poly voice. So connected to the three outputs there. So I'm no keyboard first two so, so I'm in no way, shape or form capable of uh, adding the nuances that velocity and aftertouch bring to music. Um, but it's just great that you have that capability. I can, I can ask my friends who are really good at playing keyboard to play something really beautiful and record it in the Hermit and play it back over my modules the way I want it. So for now, I would say, let's uh, go back and just create a single voice. 
a mono voice and let's go to my notes do it something like that that's that's nice and then connect that to the graphic vco and i'm gonna put it in wavetable mode first there we go on the asset one and i'm gonna grab the output from that and connect that to the dual vcf as well so this is nice if you're running it in wavetable mode and you can do things like okay well i want to modulate um the well the actual sounds here as well but you can also do and that's something i really like is if you put the graphic vco in drum mode and you grab the gates and you connect that to the amount cv and you start getting all of these nice rhythms let me just turn down the owner a bit This is how I typically like to create these random patches and I can I can keep on randomizing these as much as I want until I find something that I like and I can tweak it if I want. So let's go to track one and change that as well. Here we go. So that's not too bad. So you saw how we are now using these and we can also start using the, the input CVs to say, okay, well, once uh, we have hit all eight notes, then we want to send uh, a trigger to A to go to the next sequence, or we want to do other things there as well. There's also a full effects matrix that you can dive into, but that goes beyond the scope of this uh, initial video. Um, so as said, if you want me to dive into a specific topic with the Hermit, let me know in the comments below or drop me a line because this thing is a this is a powerhouse this is a powerhouse and i truly love the well the ingenuity and also how instinctively you're able to do all these great things it's quite intuitive and yeah this has earned its its hp in my system and I truly love that. And I do have to thank Squarp Instruments for sending this uh, unit over. But I would say, look, let's go back to the studio and wrap this up. And I'm just going to listen to a bit more music, if you don't mind. <laughs> So I truly hope you enjoyed that quick demo of the Hermo or Hermit from Squawk Instruments. I truly enjoy this sequencer style that they've got. I love how versatile it is. I enjoy using this to connect all of my CV, my keyboards, my computer to it. And it is actually that analog to digital bridge that I was actually looking for. So I think this is going to be in my system for quite some time. Um, Again, thanks to Squarp Instruments for making this available to me. For now, if you've got any questions or any comments, please drop them in the comments below or reach out directly to me through email, through Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, you name it. Um, but for now, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Cheers.